Right, we've got 12 games left and we survived the transfer window. I'm not going to avoid talking about it any longer. Let's try and qualify for the Champions League. Well, that's put a curse on it now, hasn't it? Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 14 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games in the Bundesliga for you. We're away against Nuremberg and at home against Stuttgart. Since you were last with me, um, we've played all through January. We had a nice little friendly and then four games in the league. Um, everything was going well, apart from this one game against Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim were down in 15th place. I think they just caught us on a bad day. We're in the midst of a little bit of an injury crisis that... I mean, it's still going on. Vital's out for the next seven weeks to three months with torn knee ligaments, as is Janjicic. That's our captain and our vice-captain, both with the same injury. I think they just need each other. As in, like, knees. You know what I mean. Um, but we, it was a very makeshift team against Hoffenheim. Um as you can see, we've got Canoni, we've got Matthews. We had Emmanuel playing in midfield with Purby. We've got a few other players returning from injury now, and it is looking a little bit more like a team again for today. Um, but this is what the Bundesliga is looking like, and this is why I think we probably do need to start dreaming a little bit. 22 games played. We're on 44 points, third in the league, level on points for second place Stuttgart. And we're ahead of Munch and Gladbach and Munich and Leipzig. I'm not saying any of the first parts. I don't know why. Um, it, there's not this little breakaway six teams this year. It's a breakaway eight teams. The the gap is between Schalke and then Freiburg. We're going to finish top eight, surely. And anywhere in that top eight is an overachievement. But I think it's time to justify the move to Hamburg by qualifying for the Champions League in our first full season. Because, oh, goodness me, that will feel good. So we need two wins today. So just win, 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 win. That's what it's all about. We're probably the one team in this run-in that doesn't have anything else going on. We're out of all the cups. We were never in Europe. We've just got to win as many of these next 12 games as we possibly can and that and hope that that's enough. So this is our team. It, like I say, it looks a lot more like a team again now. Uh, Purby's still in it. But to be fair to Purby, I think he'll end up getting goal of the season at the end of the season. I think it was the second one that he got against Hanover. We're going to have a look at this goal because it was an absolute beauty. He scored twice in this game, one of which was in the 93rd minute, and it was absolutely stunning. I remember him scoring a screamer for Fulham like three or four years ago, and I thought I had a real player on my hands and then loaned him out to the championship for several seasons. But this, that that's a goal. Fifth one we scored in that game as well. It was lovely. So this is the team for the Nuremberg game. We've got Mayer in goal, a back four of Friedel, Gomez, Emmanuel and Buckerite, Perby and Mori in midfield, Okafor, Matthews and Chaton behind Thorne leading the line. We turned down a £15 million offer from Leicester for Liam Thorne um, over the January transfer window. He didn't want to go, which which is good. I mean, I, I did say, look, if you give me £30 million, quid, we might let you have him because we've got Canoni, we've got Capshack. We've still got Van Emmerich knocking around the club as well. We probably do need to lose one of our four strikers because we play with a three-striker system. But we don't really want the one that goes to be Liam Thorne because he's scoring lots of goals. Right. We are going to try and stay calm for as long as possible. We'll stay calm, but just say, look, we are the better team here. We're the ones that are in form. Nuremberg down in 11th place. Many, many, many points behind us. This should be a game that we're capable of winning relatively comfortably, especially now we're getting the majority of our players back again. Obviously, we are going to miss Vital. We are going to miss Janjicic. They're both out for most of the rest of the season now. But we did sign Matthews for a reason. Matthews can slot in as our attacking midfielder in place of Vital and hopefully do just as good a job there as Vital would have done. My worry is central midfield because... We've got Rodriguez just coming back from injury as well, so he should be fit to play soon. But Mori, as well as he's been playing, he's been playing out of position for most of the season. He's defensive midfielder playing in midfield. And the fact we're having to play Purby whilst trying to push for a Champions League qualification spot is hopefully terrifying to all of us. 
Nuremberg have scored here, but we've gone over to the little telly. So let's have a look to see what the little little telly says. Hopefully, it's going to be. Dis it's not disallowed, is it? I don't even know what they went to the little telly for. Potentially for an offside. He looked offside, actually. The guy who ended up playing the cross, but. We're one nil down. We've come back from worse than this at various points this season. I'm not worried yet at being one nil down, but it's um, we've only played a couple of games without Yanya Chich and Vital at this point, and I, I'm just a little bit worried that we don't really have much on the bench now. Oh, Okafor just wide coming in off that left wing. He's another one who's been injured recently. We had to play a game and it wasn't the one that we lost. We had to play a game without Thorne, without Okafor, without the two who were still injured, without Rodriguez. It was... Um, we were struggling to put a team together at times. We didn't have any money to spend in the January transfer window so we couldn't rectify that situation. I did consider saying, look, Let's qualify for the Champions League. Let's have the extra money that comes with that. But what I don't want to do is promise that and then get fired when I inevitably fail. Okafor's done brilliantly to keep hold of the ball here. Crosses to Thorne. And he should have done a lot better with the header. When you're six foot five and you've got a winger out there working that hard and doing that well to get the crossover into the middle, I think if I'm Okafor, I expect a little bit more from Liam Thorne there. Little bit disappointed with that. Right, let's... Let's go to... I don't want to go all the way... Should I go to aggressive? Yeah, let's go to aggressive. Where's your passion? Always about passion. We are a better team than Nuremberg. And maybe being calm pre-match wasn't the right thing to do. Perhaps we do need passion and assertiveness as part of this running. I just don't want to put too much pressure on. We're massively overperforming. And I need to, I need to kind of stealth modus into a Champions League qualification without the players realising that's what's going on. Okafor's in and that's his 13th goal of the season. He he might well be signing of the save so far because we got he was so cheap. He was like six million quid and he is such an incredible player as our inside forward on this left wing. We show we saw in the first half what he's willing to do just to get a crossover. But it was a beautiful finish there as well. He's our top scorer. And I don't understand why no one else had signed him in the seven or eight seasons previously. It doesn't make any sense to me. I get that in my save, it seems the Swiss leagues are glitched and that's why he wasn't playing for Basel. But why has no one else signed him? He's walked into the third best team in Europe and looked like a superstar at a team pushing for Champions League football. I don't understand why why he's not been playing, why he's not been signed by anybody. Right, we're making a double attacking change here. We're going to bring on Canoni and Rocky for uh, for Thorn and Chaton. And we're going to ask for more passion again. Come on, give me passion. We've got 20 minutes to score a passionate, a passionate winner. We're going to bring Rodriguez on in a second, who hasn't played for a long time. In fact, that that's the cue. If we've gone behind again, we need to get Rodriguez on into that midfield. Purby can come off. I don't know why Purby is captain. I've only just noticed. I guess with our captain and vice captain unavailable, it's gone to auto captain. I cannot believe Hussein Purby is the man who should be captaining Hamburg. He's English. I don't know that he speaks German. He's not a regular in our team. It's That seems like a poor piece of decision making. Probably shouldn't have let that happen. How many of you noticed that at the start of the match and had already told me off about it? Oh, it's all going wrong. Oh, I, <laughs> at least we're still in a Champions League spot at the moment. But there are teams are all around us with games in hand. I said in the intro, soon as I decided that's what I wanted, we've been keeping it a secret for so long, but as soon as we decided that's what we were pushing for, we've gone to a team that we're much better than. We're much better than Nuremberg. And we don't look it today because they're absolutely spanking us. And it's it's troublesome. Who are we... Did it, is it Stuttgart we're playing next? I forget who we're playing in the second game. If it's Stuttgart, that then becomes a must-win game. If we lose... If we lose the second game in this episode, I want to re-record the intro. And we just, we'll forget all about Champions League. I don't want to see any more. I've had enough of this. Just... You idiots. You're all idiots. How have we conceded four goals in this game? We've been doing so well for so long. And this this is worse than the Hoffenheim game was. At least then we had an excuse. We were playing a hugely rotated team and we only lost narrowly. This one, we've been absolutely battered. And 
yeah, you're coming to training tomorrow, you bunch of idiots. Yikes. I can't even see who we're playing next because it's so far off in the future. Well, that, that didn't go that didn't go as planned. Bayern Munich have sacked their manager again. We'll see how that turns out. Also, we picked up an injury. Friedel is injured. Um, so we're going to have to play an unknown left back in this game. But I've, disco <laughs> I've discovered a good one in our B team. Oh, I should pay more attention to our own youth players. I mean, he, he's he's not spectacular yet. One and a half star current ability, a, ability at age 17. But does have a tasty little four and a half star potential ability. So he's going to make his debut for us today because we don't have anybody else to play left back. I think he's the only change we've made from the last game. It's been ages. It's been like eight or nine days. Um, we Inexplicably, Rodriguez still not fit to play. I'm starting to think he'll never play for us again. I can't even find him at the moment because um, I've got all the B team and everyone on here. When I'm, I'm, I've been left back hunting. Um, where's Rodriguez? Where is Rodriguez? There he is. Still not fit to play. Only 78% condition, 81% match fitness. I guess there's an argument we could put him on the bench. But mm, I'm sorry. my instinct is, what's the point? But you know what? We probably should have him on the bench. Because otherwise, it's just lots of strikers. Lang, Van Hemerick, Canoni, and tougher fella who was down there before as well. Let's let's just get into the game. We are playing Stuttgart. Other results from when we last played have forced us down to sixth place. But remember, points are very tight up in these Champions League qualification spots. We won't worry yet. We do need to beat Stuttgart, though. Um, there you go. We owe Stuttgart after our last game. Hand over to the assistant to the rest of it. And let's have a look at this league table. So a win against Stuttgart today won't... I, no, it'll put us level on points with them. But after getting thumped in the last game, we'll still be below them on goal difference. Borussia Mönchengladbach have now leapt over the top of Stuttgart. Bayern <laughs> Munich are in there as well. Having sacked their manager, they're still sat in a Champions League spot. I don't understand these really big clubs. Is that a club I want to manage? Where... You're in a Champions League spot with 10, with 10 or 11 games to go and you still get fired, having won the league the year before. Liam Thorne's just put us 1-0 up, though, and they're not in a Champions League spot anymore because we've just leapt over them to grab it from them. I think, is it 10 games left after this one? This is gonna this is going to be tight. It's going to be an interesting run in. Okafor, brilliant again, and a tidy little finish from Liam Thorne. And hopefully, hopefully that puts us back to winning ways and we can... We can be done with the, the nonsense that you saw in that first match. Matthews does brilliantly. Plays it back to Chaton. Purby's there. Bounces back off the post. Thorne was lurking. Trying to do a... Trying to get the Fulham connection in there for a, for a second goal. But Thorne couldn't quite get on to the end of it. And the ball bounces clear. And we kind of drift into a period of nothingness in the match. Which I can handle a period of nothingness. I'd be quite happy if this just ended 1-0 from this point because that would be a win and an end to an episode that leaves us in a Champions League spot. I keep saying Champions League spot. I haven't actually confirmed because the Bundesliga is the third highest reputation league. I did check that. I didn't check how many Champions League spots we get. I'm assuming it's still four. There's a chance it could be three and it's maybe just the Premier League and La Liga that have got four. I'm sure you lot will enlighten me down in the comments. Does Bundesliga get four if they're the third best league? Um, right, let's assertively say don't get complacent. That's that's pleased everybody as well. This is good. Two good team talks. There's a difference from the first match. Perhaps all you need is a couple of decent team talks. Emmanuel now with a free kick. Bounces back of the keeper. Thorne is in twice. And um, that's frustrating from Liam Thorne. He's had a number of chances in this game. Obviously, he has scored one of them. But he, probably, he could have had a hat-trick at this point. And I hope that's not going to come back and bite us at the end of the game. Corner comes in from Emmanuel and falls as far as Gomez. Gomez with the cross. We're just going to use our centre-backs for crossing because that's how we do things. It does lead to problems like this where the counter-attack is on and we don't have any centre-backs because they're both up the other end of the pitch doing corners and crosses and whatnot. But, eh, doesn't matter. Got to live a little, haven't you? Chaton now can't quite... Get onto the end of that. Gomez is there to clear, and Liam Thorne is there to chase. But it falls to Purby, in fact, who finds Okafor. Thorne is three in the middle, and there is Liam Thorne, and he hits the post. Oh, how many chances does Liam Thorne need in one game of football? It's saying three clear cut chances, three half chances. I think all six of those chances have fallen to Liam Thorne. 
We need more than a one goal return from him in a game like this because Stuttgart are a good side and I would expect them to come back at us in this last 25 minutes. Mayer now plays it forward for Thorne. He's through on goal again. Liam Thorne gets his second of the game to put Hamburg 2-0 up and that is a 6 foot 5, 14 stone man who's just done a cartwheel. That is a sight to behold, I am sure. I want to see it from the other angle, just to see the cartwheel again. This is an absolute giant of a man, and here comes his cartwheel. Madness. Absolute madness. I'm surprised he didn't break both of his wrists. Right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Chaton can... Where, where's Rocky? Who picks this bench? My word. Right, we're going to take Mori off and bring Rodriguez on. We need game time for Rodriguez, that's for sure. I don't know why Rocky's not on the bench. <clears throat> Canoni can go on the right wing. Let's do that. Stick Canoni out there. He runs a lot. I love a man who runs a lot. And hopefully he can run so far and for so long that he creates a hat-trick chance for Liam Thorne. I mean, to be fair, he's already had several of those. But he needs another one because we want him to finish off that hat-trick. Matthews is going to come off for Marvin Lang. We haven't seen Marvin Lang for ages. I'm actually going to swap those two over. Play Okafor in behind Thorne. We've done that a couple of times during this little injury crisis. It looks like his position suitability for it doesn't really work. But that per by goal I saw, showed you at the start of the episode, Okafor was playing as the attacking midfielder there and was instrumental in that goal with a lovely little pass into the path of Perby. I think Okafor can just play anywhere. Butker right now plays it forward to Canoni. Out of position to Perby, who's in position. That's his same Perby. Remember him from Fulham Reserves? He's just skipped past two Champions League quality defenders. I mean, he didn't score, but he suddenly looks like a footballer. I think we need, we might have to do a DNA test on Perby just to check he's not been replaced by a real football player. Because this little run of games that he's having, he's he's starting to look, dare I say it, he's starting to look like a half decent signing. And I laughed almost as hard as you lot did when I signed him in the summer. But here he is, played six or seven games in a row, and he doesn't look out of place in this team. It's ridiculous. Lang into Okafor. He's got Thorne ahead of him. Here is Liam Thorne for his hat trick. He's, you, I mean, the record, let the record books show Liam Thorne single handedly put paid to Stuttgart with a hat trick. A dominant, free scoring, attacking performance from Liam Thorne. Let's just pretend he didn't get, I mean, he could have got six or seven goals in this game. All credit to the rest of the team, really, to create so many chances for him. And he has scored three of them, so we can't really complain that much. And in fact, that goal turnaround is enough to have put us above Stuttgart. So we end the episode exactly where we started it, in third place. But now we've only 10 games to go, rather than 12. And I think we can safely continue to dream everybody we've got some big we've got playing Leipzig next we have big games coming up I think we already saw in the last episode that's a very big game. imagine if I get the job there and that becomes a Champions League playoff but I'm on the other side of it that's going to be insane so with 10 games left I don't want to play too many I think what we might do is I'm going to show you some games that I expect us to win we're going to do Dusseldorf and Grutha Firth mainly because I'd like to think we should win those games. Oh, do we, no, in fact, let's do Frankfurt and us. I'm trying to spread it evenly. So we're definitely going to show you the last two. Borussia Mönchengladbach, Bayern Munich. That leaves eight in the middle. So we'll, we'll just do we'll just do Leipzig, Hertha Berlin, Dortmund, offline, then Frankfurt, Dusseldorf in the next episode. Then we do another three offline, final two online. That makes sense to me. So cross everything. Fingers crossed, arms crossed, legs crossed. Cross your tongues, we might end up in the Champions League yet, which would be absolutely insane. Remember as well, we are back to the normal release schedule next week. So you've got non needs Legend 4 o'clock every weekday and then 11 o'clock on Saturday coming up. So back to normal. We'll, this time next week, we'll be in the Champions League quarterfinals. My word. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.